So that's ice on the inside of the skylight now. Well, you might be able to hear the heater cranking in the background. It is time for us to head north. We did not expect it to be this cold here. I'm ready for a tan, I'm ready to swim, and Ox ready to find some crocs. Let's go. Oki, naughty. Oki's chasing the peacocks. Come on, buddy. Well, we have stopped off in the beautiful little town of Elliot where there is an abundance of peacocks, it seems. And we are on the way to one of the most famous pubs in Australia, the Daily Waters. I'm pleased to say it is finally getting warm. What the hell have we just driven into? <laughs> Bloody hell. Chock a block. How hot do you reckon we it is now? 25. We've encountered the first croc of the trip. Everyone, meet Kevin. Oki okay, and Alfred are keen to meet Kev. So we're at the front of the Daily Waters pub and apparently every night here there's a ritual where Tim, the owner, comes through the beer garden and he's got a bit of an entourage. I'm gonna show you as they come through this place is definitely unique, I will say that much. The world comes to you here. Well, it is amazing the difference just heading a few hours north in Australia can make. It is still the middle of winter, however today it is going to be 27 degrees and it's already feeling about 20 degrees at the moment. So good. And I think from here on out we're out of the cold. It's a good look there Samuel. <laughs> Buddy. This is my transition phase from, <laughs> from cold weather to warm weather. Warm up top. <laughs> It is crazy how much this landscape has changed. We are currently walking through Madarenka National Park on the lookout for crocs. There's one. I'll move forever forward like a light that cuts through the discord. Come now, do not hesitate. The world you recreate yourself. This place is bloody magic. That was just the most amazing experience. I'm so excited for the tropical north. Well, sometimes places truly do exceed your expectations and Bitter Springs is definitely one of those. How is this a spot for our morning coffees? What a view! Lovely spot. Thanks Jess. Looks delicious. 
Well, I'm gonna give Sam and Jess a little bit of a head start as I wanna take this opportunity to thank today's video sponsor, which is Native Deodorants. I've been using Native Deodorants for over two years now, and now that it is getting further north and getting hotter, it's even more important than I stay on top of using the deodorant. Native have recently updated their plastic free packaging and I like it even more now. It's so easy to use. For those of you who remember, it's just like a push pop. It's not sticky and it lasts up to 72 hours. So even after exercise, you stay really fresh. The three scents that I went with was eucalyptus and mint, the coconut and vanilla, and the cucumber and mint. Cucumber and mint actually used to be my favorite. It's super fresh. The coconut and vanilla is very beachy, but my new favorite is the eucalyptus and mint. It's just very Australian forest. I really like the scent of this one. I've also got good feedback on it. And the thing I love about these deodorants is all ingredients are aluminium free, paraben free, vegan and cruelty free. And the ingredients are all familiar and simple such as coconut oil and shea butter. Further to these three, there's a wide range of choices available with new limited edition and sensitive scents being released all the time. If you are considering upping your deodorant game, a three pack of the plastic free deodorant would normally cost you 39 bucks. However, if you use my link and the discount code MAXOCKY3, you can get the three pack for 26 bucks. That's over 33% off. And that link will also get you 20% off their range of body wash and toothpaste. Bloody good deal. And now before we follow the other guys to Catherine, I wanna take you to an interesting little town called Larimer. A $250,000 reward has now been offered for information in relation to the death of Paddy Moriarty. The reward is for information that leads to locating Paddy's body and convicting who is responsible. It is hard to keep a secret. Someone out there knows what happened. Well, we have just pulled over in Larimer what you were listening to then is the kind of final findings from the podcast Lost in Larimer, which is a true crime podcast about the disappearance of one of the residents here, Paddy Moriarty. And when I say one of the residents here, Larimer has a population of around 10 and the disappearance occurred in 2017, December 2017, and his body was never found, but it's now presumed that he encountered foul play and it's looking likely that it was one of the other 10 residents in this town that caused it. It's an ongoing investigation, but I've been so kind of enthralled by this story. It's crazy. Normally with these true crime podcasts, you kind of don't get to see the actual location and this is such a bizarre one. So to be here now, I'm gonna have a bit of a look around the town. You kind of got to meet all the characters in the podcast. So I'm gonna have a hunt around. Highly encourage you all to have a listen to this one because it's a really kind of intriguing case. And um, yeah, it's still ongoing. And so there's so many quirky things about this town that I learned in the podcast. And one is that this house over here used to be the old post office for the town. However, now the post goes through the pub. And unfortunately, the owners of the pub or the previous owners of the pub and the people that live in the post office really don't get along anymore. So much to the point that those that live in this house here drive 70 kilometers to pick up their post every time rather than going over to the pub to get their mail. Such a quirky town. And I just want to say one more thing about it because I know not everyone will find this as interesting as me, but behind the missing person sign for Paddy, you'll have noticed that there's a sign saying the best pies in town are at the Larimer Hotel. And that's interesting because his house is actually directly across the road from Fran's tea house which also is a pie shop and apparently Paddy would often when people pulled up out the front of his place to go into Fran's pie shop would walk out the front and tell him that even his dog wouldn't eat those pies and send them down to the hotel so he had a bit of an ongoing dispute with the neighbor across the road and it sounds like these disputes were all through the town it's so crazy but at the end of the day it's so sad what's happened to him and yeah, I just hope that they get some closure on that in the end. We're gonna keep moving. You ready? You ready? Oi, bring it back. Hopeless. 
Now, something that to lift the mood, I know you're all always wanting to hear more about Oki. We are currently at a dog park in Catherine, and I just know that it's inevitable as I move somewhere warmer, I always get comments about Oki with his thick coat and why don't I clip him? And I just want to address that quickly because I know you all have his best interests at heart, just like I do. That's why I spent so many hours insulating the van and putting so many holes in the roof to make sure the ventilation was right. That's why I spent $2,000 on air conditioning and that's why I always look after him. So just for you that aren't aware, Oki and Australian Shepherds have double coats and any breeds with a double coat, it's actually really not good for them to clip them. For starters, it means they shed more, their top coat may never grow back, but also that top coat is involved in their temperature regulation. That coarse hair helps protect them from the sun rays, it insulates them from the heat, and it also helps prevent bugs biting them, which is important up here where there's ticks. So that's why I'm not clipping him. However, in saying that, there is ways you can make them more comfortable and we are about to go to the rumor that I booked in in advance. Hey Ock, you ready to be treated? So Kazumi here is going to be giving Oki his little beauty treatment, de-shedding and making him a little bit cooler for the warm weather. Kazumi's been doing dog grooming for 15 years, so if you're in Catherine, look her up. What's the name of your company, Kazumi? Happy Tails Dog Grooming. Love that. Happy Tails Dog Grooming. How'd you go? Ah, oh, he looks great. Hey, buddy. Look like a puppy again. How did he go? Was he alright <laughs> for you? <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Yeah. How old did you think Oki was? I thought Oki was about two. About two. <laughs> yeah. How's that, buddy? And he saw you pre the clean. Alfred. Look at this clean oh little my boy. God, the guy there thought he was two years old. Oh, Kiki. Oh, spring chicken. Oh, he looks so white. He's got like little flares on his foot. Is he confident that that will fix the problem? Um. No, that's a no. Good morning. It is an absolute cracker of a day today. We are at a free camp just outside of Catherine. I'm going to do a tour of Sam and Jess's van because it's so beautiful. You guys need to check it out. Is that good, bud? Okay, come on. Oki, shake. Good boy. Come on. Such a clever doggo. Now, I know for a fact that seeing Oki in the river would have sent some of your heart rates up, but I just want to reassure you, I did check. There's no salties in this area, so he's all safe, and I'm keeping a very close eye on him. Okay, I just wanted to jump in here and say a couple of things before we end on Sam and Jess's van tour. First off, I have a feeling this vlog could end up really erratic, so I apologize in advance for that. We've just covered so much, but hopefully I can pull it all together in the edit and not leave you all scratching your head. Next, last week I had a bit of a final destination moment with a couple of hitchhikers, which I should mention because it did lead to the van copping another scar. Uh, oh. Oh. Oh my god, that's oh, so scary! <laughs> Lesson learned from that one, get windscreen insurance when you're traveling in the outback. And finally, I wanna say a huge thank you to all of you. Thank you so much for all the love and support you guys give me week in, week out, or I should say video in, video out. They're hardly weekly. As most of you know, the last couple of years have been super tough for me and really there's been points in those two years where I have barely been able to recognize myself and it's only been in the last few months I've really felt that I've got a spark coming back and I feel myself on the way to becoming whole again. So thank you for your support, you've certainly helped and the other things that are helping is seeing this beautiful world again and hanging out with some of my best friends. So let's go do a tour with them. Oh, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, you got no idea what I'm talking about, consider subscribing you can go back all the vids are there and yeah i'd love to have you along for the adventure let's do it you stay here for this one bud 
Okay, well, as I make the long journey over to their van, I wanna give you a quick background on our relationship. Essentially, I met Sam almost 15 years ago in the first week of our paramedic course, and along with two other paramedics, we all became best mates, and we've been best mates ever since. As you can imagine, that's why it's such a dream for me to be traveling with these guys now. And when I met Sam, he was already dating a beautiful girl called Jess, who I eventually met, and they're now married. They've been married for seven years already and still going very strong. Now, guys, <laughs> they laughed at that. Now, you guys ready for a tour? Ready yeah. You are. All right, guys, take it away. All right. So this is our van. We bought it in the middle of last year during lockdown. Uh, it's a 2018 Mercedes Sprinter. Uh, it's done about 50,000 Ks yep. uh, and we call it Sunny. So okay. we'll start with the back of the van. Down here we've got our outdoor table, Lovely inspired by up. your man Max, <laughs> Yours where truly. we often prepare food when we're outside, yep. on a nice day. Uh, in here we've got our outdoor shower, yep. um, so not quite as luxe as yours, but the indoor <laughs> shower, and then you've got some garage storage back here just for your home well, and things like that. It'll be really good at the beach having a table yep. like that, I think, and more storage, yep. Alright Fred, we're coming around. All right, we'll move into the van. We'll start with the bathroom. Yep. So, a bit like Max's van, we've also got the composting toilet. This, however, is the air toilet. So far, so good. It's been holding all of our poops quite well. <laughs> good. Uh, and because not, most people, like I've got the nature's head, and I know that's the most popular compost, but you found it good so far? It fit nicely into our space, didn't it? It did, it was yeah. a good fit for our van. And then we've also got the, uh, the door through to the front. Yep. So this wall was an essential feature of our van because it's really good for insulation but we wanted also to be able to get through to the front and also so that Alfred wasn't isolated in the back back here while we were driving. That partition wall definitely finishes off the van, it's so beautiful that divider. Yeah, well that was the thing, well, we wanted it to be a bit of a feature. You'll actually find that this van, the actual <laughs> layout was largely designed by me but all of the aesthetics in terms of the colours and the, the interior timber, design. The interior design was all Jessica, so a bit of a team effort I guess. Yeah. yeah. Up here we've got our cupboard, so we've got our appliances, you've got your coffee machine, Vitamix, you've got your air fryer, this is where our linen lives during the day, um, some hanging space. Do you want to show the kitchen, Jessica? Sure. So, cooking is one of my favourite things to do, and I wanted to be able to cook all of our favourite things on the road, so we've loaded it up and used as much space as we possibly can. This is one of my, it's my pride and joy, our pantry. Um, so this is very handy for all our staples, and we've also got one of my other favorite features our spice rack here and some storage for coffee mugs that wall feels like it was just a really good use of space it's very homey very homey and then we've got some more pantry food in here yep and dirty washing that was one thing we were told to have to find a spot for so we've got a dirty washing pull out as well all of our storage for our kitchen is through here appliances are in the cupboard yeah we've got the rv latches which we love as well and this is the bedroom so we're currently set up for our this is like alfred's day bed if we're out and about doing things so he loves having it all to himself um and then we store all of our bedding overnight in the overhead behind sam um and then kitchen rest of the kitchen got a bit distracted this is the induction which is our second one now so it has arrived the first one broke and we now know not to store anything heavy in this overhead over here and then we've got this as a bit of extra space the um sink topper here so nice deep sink which yeah. we love and that would always be empty wouldn't it, it wouldn't yeah be. Never, never any dirty dishes, dishes. Never. <laughs> never no i wouldn't have thought that. <laughs> Bedroom. Yeah, Alfred's little bed uh, slides out from here as well. Where's um, that? Sorry, just in this little spot here. So it pulls it out and it's a fold out bed. Oh, so we had that so made. Good. One of my friends made the cover for us so it fit in there perfectly. And then where you are, Max, we've got this extra bench here, which we love. Um, very handy for when we're doing all those dishes. So it just pops up here, gives us a bonus space for dishes or cooking yeah it gives um, you heaps of extra counter space and yeah even like when we're outside little bar for drinks yeah. cocktails if we have a cocktail night okay. and this is also very handy jules inspired this um she told us to get a tap that we could um, move around and pull out so if we just need to rinse off outside so right. thanks jules we can show you the dining room now dining room no that sounds a bit wanky yeah. No, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dining room it is they're going to show me how they make the bed to the couch table set up 
really just speed it up and make it look yeah. like it takes no time at all. <laughs> <laughs> How long do you reckon the folding will last before you scrunch? Because I scrunch. Oh yeah, we're a scrunch. Oh, I normally scrunch. I'm actually surprised <laughs> that you did this. <laughs> this is the mattress topper. Make it a little bit. Makes it a little bit more comfy. Extra luck. Here you go. So it is a bit of a process to change it from the bed to the couch. Why did you go with the bed couch? Uh, well, we've only got the medium wheelbase sprinter, so we don't have quite as much room as what some people yeah. do. So in order to have a sitting area and a bed, this is the best solution for us. And we wanted to be able to entertain and play games, and we just didn't think we'd quite be able to do that otherwise. All right, take me through the dining room. Uh, so this is the dining room. Yep. Um, table. A table. It's a good. Yes. <laughs> you can move it around. We've actually even like Plenty make space. It. We've also got the two Sirocco fans. We've got the opening window behind you and the skylight for a bit of light and uh, just keeping it airy and fresh. And they all have flash screens, which is massive in an area like this. So what's in the all the overheads? Just quick, briefly. Ooh. That's yeah. A good yeah. You don't want to go in this one. <laughs> <laughs> Now this one is predominantly most of our electric, so you'll find our inverter, our 12 volt meter, our water, which is about half full, our RV Wi-Fi, yep. um, and then occasionally other kind a few of other things, things that we chuck up there. Um, this is all of my belongings. Yeah, yep. I get one cupboard. Well, yeah. you had These two in your three are all <laughs> Jessica's belongings. I must say they're like spread out though. And then the end one is our Vitamix. So in terms of the technicals, so this is our fridge. We've got 130 litre Bushman's fridge to power that. We've got 350 watts of solar. Yep. We've got 400 amp hours of battery and we've got uh, 90 litres of uh, fresh water strapped to the bottom of the van. Which so far for yeah. our month on the road has functioned it's been really so well. Yeah. So yeah, we're really happy. It's been a dream. Now, I don't think we've mentioned it yet, but I'm sure some people watching would want to know you got someone to build this van. We Who did. built it for you? So uh, we talked about doing it ourselves and we were umming and ahhing and you didn't want to lose any fingers or toes. And I'm not very handy, unfortunately. We thought it would probably take us years without um, doing it full time. So we got Blackbird van builders um, to do it there in Ferntree Gully in Melbourne and they've obviously done a beautiful job. We are so happy with how it's finished and how it looks and yep. functions. Final question, guys. Ooh. You have seven months <laughs> off. What inspired this journey? Oh, it's uh, Max. You were our inspiration for sure. <laughs> Such a leading it question. sounds so <laughs> yes. <laughs> And I should also mention that one of the amazing things about these guys traveling with me is that they are both also vegan, which obviously we're in the minority here. So it's awesome that they are. And Jess is an amazing vegan chef. If you notice during my deodorant scene that I'd put on a couple of kilos, <laughs> I would say Jess is partially to blame for that <laughs> with her cooking and yeah she actually has an instagram page where she does all plant-based recipes called kind to all kinds you should definitely yeah. check out jess's instagram if you want any food inspo now, i think we're probably going to finish it there because it's coming up to the weekend and we're going to have it off we are going to swim and um yeah just enjoy it yeah can't wait. can't wait thanks guys and if you couldn't tell sam is hesitant in front of the camera so i really appreciate him taking us through that Killed tour it, please Killed give it. him a thumbs up and yeah <laughs> we will see you in the next one bye guys just just vodka on the rocks <laughs> i'm actually really feeling like are you filming me <laughs> bloopers here we go <laughs> I love Sam's commitment to getting the right shot for Jess. Cinematic. Oh, this is a good portrait, mate. Put it in cinematic. Know. You got the sun right behind you, like this. They are just honestly the best couple. Lately, the day's feeling bright. Shifting from darkness to light.